Welcome to the Z Files. You're zooming with Ellie Crystal of crystallinks.com. Today I chose the topic collapse because so much is imploding and collapsing around us. Highlighting the news today, beginning on last Thursday, June 24th, which was five days ago, Surfside condominium, 12 story condominium building suddenly collapsed. Was it suddenly? Wasn't it suddenly? Was it was there faults? Obviously, because the reports are coming in now. But we'll leave those to the engineers to talk about what went wrong in the building, why it suddenly collapsed, even though there were warnings, there were tenants complaining, people were, you know, trying to get some help to restore a building, but you know how it is with landlords. If you've ever lived in a building with a landlord, it's hard to get them to fix things. But let's look at collapse. When I think of collapse, we live in a simulated reality. It's comprised of consciousness grids that allow us as projected illusion in the simulation to believe that everything around us is real so we can experience things emotionally. I know that's a big statement. It had a beginning and it's coming to the end as everything within the simulation from people's behavior to just about everything is imploding on each other. To me, when I saw what was going on with, in Miami with Surfside, all I could think about is the implosion at 9-11 that I stood on my terrace and I watched in total disbelief as the second plane hit the second tower. The first tower I saw after it happened on the news, but I was able to see the second tower. And I have to tell you, it's like, you just can't believe the shock of it all when, when something like this happens and a building actually collapses. From the 9-11 experience, I had a lot of people who came here and they wanted to talk to deceased loved ones who had passed on that day. Um, their stories about their escape from one of the Twin Towers or another building was just unbelievable. They spoke about running down steps and, and trying to remember where are the staircases, where is everything, is it going to be, are the stairs going to be there because stairwells collapse. Are the doors going to be able to be opened? It's this, this moment of surreal where you just go running. One of them explained to me that as she was coming down a flight of steps with a few other people, they passed some firefighters or they thought they were firefighters along the way who were trying to guide and help them. But in truth, those firefighters we're doing that in spirit because those firefighters had already passed, but somehow they managed to connect with the consciousness. Remember, everything's consciousness of my clients because they were both out of body and they were able to say, go this way, take this staircase, don't take this, do this, do this. And by luck, by chance, by programming, people escaped, my clients escaped, others. And they tell of these stories of what happened along the way. This morning on CNN, um, Wolf Blitzer read a letter by a woman who had escaped from the Surfside Condominium Tower. It was so sad how she was trying. You know, when you're running and you're trying to escape, you try to help others along the line, or you remember, wait, you're, you're going, running down and you, you just say, well, wait, I have to help Mrs. Smith, you know, and I have to stop and I have to rescue her because she may, maybe she's not mobile. You, so many things go through your mind at that time. It's, it's um, part consciousness at this level. Like, I remember that this door is open. I remember we could do this. Or if we run to a certain part of the building, we may be safer. And maybe you already know that the fire department is coming. So you just assume that maybe they'd be able to, 
use those cherry pickers to come up and get you. A lot of things goes through your mind at that time. Uh, of course, there are those who pray. There are those who, you know, whatever they do in times of disaster. But the average person is really just looking to try to figure out the extent of the damage to listen to the sounds of those who are saying, come this way, come this way, perhaps, you know, part of search and rescue um, or just other people that they know or go out onto a terrace, you know, see so you're part listening, you're part processing, you're part in physical reality, you're part not in physical reality. It's, um, it's, it's a very horrific situation, but it is ongoing and it is increasing because the simulation that we live in, as I said, had the beginning and at the end, things implode, whether they're physical things, emotional things, whatever they are, they begin to implode, the layers implode. When I hear stories of this kind, when I talk to people who have been through these experiences, it always makes me wonder about living in a third world country such as Syria, where every day you wake up, perhaps the sound of buildings around you being bombs, incorporating this into your daily not life, not knowing if you're going to survive the day or if your family is going to survive the day or who's alive or who's dead as you run through all the debris surrounded in death. For people in those countries, war-torn countries, this becomes a way of life. Afghanistan, and, and you know what's going on in the world. Um, then there are the deaths from natural disasters, such as earthquakes. Some of you may have been through an earthquake, a minor one, a major one. An earthquake means everything, the ground has collapsed and everything around is collapsing. And people once again, run and look for a way, sometimes climbing over dead bodies and collapsed structures to find a way to safety. It's, it's really, and it's not going to go away, unfortunately. I'm really a happy, bubbly person, honestly, but there's a difference between, I'm going to sit here and tell you, let's all medicate, meditate, medicate too, and pray that this doesn't happen. And yet, you know, you look around at the world and you know something is going to happen. The earthquakes are big and the earthquakes are increasing. And as the tectonic plates collapse, okay, and they are happening. And the first image I ever had of a collapsing of an earthquake. I didn't know what it was actually. It had to do with plate tectonics, but what I saw was like giant chunks of concrete one over the other. And I said, oh, what, what's gonna happen? Is a building gonna collapse? What is this about? And then I realized the next day when there was a major earthquake, usually the big ones are in the Pacific Rim, I realized that's my brain's way of telling me that we are going to have or have had a major earthquake. So now I understand the symbol of that. Luckily, I don't see it there often. There are a lot of little earthquakes, but getting back to earthquakes, which stir up volcanoes, Volcanoes create their own set of disasters. Um, but in terms of collapsing, the grids are collapsing. People are trying to make it seem as if, well, it just happened now, it won't happen again. But I think that hypothesis is collapsing because I think people are starting to understand anything anywhere can happen. With an earthquake and even a building collapse, there's dangers of gas leaks and fires and, and, and debris and smoke inhalation and, and just horrible, horrible things that result from no matter how it happens. Uh, then there's climate, okay? Climate is also collapsing things. We have endless storms, wildfires, um, flooding, and it's not just here in the United States, but it's collapsing the landscape all across the planet. Some people tell me, I think this is flood stories happening again 
or with all those volcanoes going off and some of their cones beginning to collapse, that maybe, maybe we're going into an ice age because when the volcanoes go up, particularly the super volcanoes, we can go into an ice age because they block the sun. I don't think we're doing flood stories. I don't think it's an ice age, but I do think that the climate changes and the natural disasters are taking out the planet, no matter how people worry about, let's, let's do something about it. Let's, let's have meetings, global meetings, city meetings to see what we can do. It's not a pretty picture if you understand that we are living in a simulation that's collapsing. And if you don't like it, there's nothing I can do about it. I didn't create it. It cannot be changed, by the way. A simulation is what it is. So know that you can't change it. You can prepare for these extreme collapses, but you can only prepare to so much. If the building you're living in or the home you're living in suddenly collapsed into, say, a sinkhole or because it was structurally damaged, whatever's meant to be is meant to be. I believe that the simulation is going to play out the way it is meant to be. Now, here's something else we're dealing with. People sometimes believe in climate change. How could you not? But then there are others, like our former president, who don't believe that climate change is a thing. You know, it's something that happens maybe to this country or that country or whatever. No, climate change is more than a thing. Climate change is here to stay. Currently, when I'm talking to you now, the whole northwest coast of the United States, all the way up into Vancouver, Canada, and even a little more east, are experiencing temperature highs like never before, over 100 degrees. And this is rapidly moving across the country. It's not anybody's fault. It's just what it is. It's science, if you really want to check the science on it, but it is destined to happen. Uh, the American Northwest is not used to this. People do not have the air conditioners. They do not have proper preparation for this. And they feel, well, we live on the Pacific coast and that's why, you know, they have problems with the homeless who always tend to navigate to the Pacific coast, but we're going to be fine. We're going to be good. I talk to them and they tell me, no, it's fine. We're going to escape all of this. It's all going to be good until it hits home. Or maybe this is a one-time deal and it's not happening. The planet's warming for any number of reasons. You can blame it on human behavior. You can blame it on anything, but the planet is warming and it's all part of what I call end times. Um, let's see this. We experience in this simulation, which is created by an algorithm. And this algorithm spirals. It spiraled out from a zero point like a Fibonacci and it's going to, and it is spiraling in to the zero point. And when it hits the zero point, it fades to black because in truth, whether you believe it or not, none of this is real. Feels real, I'm touching my arm, I feel my arm. That's because your brain is programmed to say, if you're touching your arm, you're touching your face, I'm touching a chair, they're real. But like humans, and other sentient life forms, we are wherever we are in the simulation, be it on this planet, be on another planet, on a parallel reality, no matter where we are in the whole universal simulation, okay, we are projected illusion. It always takes me back to the movie, one of my favorites with Leonardo DiCaprio, and that's Inception. He explains that this, he calls it a dream. We're in a dream. Okay, you can say this is dream time. Indigenous people consider this dream time. They don't think this is real. So, okay, so it's dream time. But whatever it is, at the end of inception, when they wake up from that major big dream, okay, and they're sitting on the airplane, meaning they're on another plane. That's what that's a metaphor for. They, the buildings go into the ocean. 
Okay, you can look that up or maybe I'll just post that picture, but you just see all the buildings as the simulation or dream is collapsing, everything implodes, just like this building Surfside did last week. It just implodes into the sea. And that, of course, is the metaphor of the sea of consciousness, the collective unconscious and all the other metaphors for that. Um, I, I don't know how to say this nicely, but I repeat it quite often because more and more people are starting to understand, you know, it's it's the craziness that's going on in the world. It's, it's everything that's happening that leads you to believe that nothing makes sense anymore from elected officials to political systems, to economic systems, to social systems. People in New York, Okay, since COVID and sort of ended, it didn't completely end, since they have come out into the world months ago, are more violent than ever. That's a social system that is collapsing and imploding. Okay, um, there's, there's no stopping it. People are doing things they never would have thought to do before. They're behaving and reacting in ways that you just sit there and you just say, what the heck is happening? Why is this happening? If you understand that at the end of a simulation, a consciousness grid simulation, and I'll put the link to that and all of the science to which you can click over. Uh, if you understand that, then you understand that this is all part and parcel of what goes on at the end of a simulation. I don't know if this is the first simulation ever. I doubt it because I've seen it reboot and I've seen it recycle and I've seen the changes when it does. Maybe you've noticed because it's happening a lot more frequently now as it comes to zero, but things are just like you wake up in the morning and go, hmm. and that's not if you've been hung over from last night or, or you're a drug addict or you're mentally unstable and you're off your meds. This is just something that is like things are not quite the way I remember them from yesterday. Okay, maybe it's a simple little thing as this pen. I know I left this pen here on my computer table. I know I did, that's it. And yet I wake up in the morning and it's over here on the desk. And I didn't get up in the middle of the night, nothing happened. So there's these subtle little changes that a lot of people notice and pay attention to. But remember, you can only do it if your mind is clear, okay? Because otherwise you're gonna get confused. Uh, you have to be realistic about what's going on in physical reality. You can't say all of these natural disasters, climate changes and, and, and explosive behaviors, be they buildings or human or trains or planes or anything else can never affect me because it's simply not true. Anything that's happening in this reality can affect anybody, anywhere, anytime. And as long as we are, I say stuck in the simulation, sorry about that. But as long as we're in the simulation, it's going to continue to implode. And you can prepare for certain things, okay? Like if they say there's gonna be a big storm or something like that, you can prepare for that. Um, you can prepare for the droughts, I guess, because on the Pacific part of the United States and other parts across the world, there's droughts and we know there's droughts and water situations and things that follow from that. And, you know, each thing ripples into the next. Wildfires cause this to happen, which causes that to happen. And then all of a sudden there's a heavy rain and, and we hear about mudslides. On the East Coast, we hear about sinkholes. There's more sinkholes going on. You know, a state like Florida was not exactly built like New York on terra firma. There's a lot of little inlets and islands that were not built that way. So... You got to look into things. You got to be cautious. You got to be careful. Um, you got to stay away from crazy people because all they're going to do is cause you more grief. You just have to know this much and remind yourself whatever this reality is, and I'm telling you, it's just a consciousness experiment 
in emotions, human behavior, okay? Whatever, it's collapsing. It's collapsing in on itself. Uh, I wish I could say better, but this is the way it is. And as it collapses back to that Fibonacci zero, it goes faster and faster and faster. Like it was going very slowly at some point. And now it's really speeding up. And if you know the numbers of Fibonacci is zero dot comma one comma one, et cetera, we are now at zero comma one. And if you're waiting for some miracle to happen, don't hold your breath as we say, okay? If you're waiting for somebody to come along and fix all of this, I mean, we can fix things like infrastructure, which is the biggest big conversation now. We can fix that. We can fix a lot of things, but I mean, when it comes to especially the natural disasters, it's, it's what it is. I have a client in San Diego who had a one point something earthquake by her building, which is right by the water. This was last week. Well, actually, she said while we were doing our reading together, and I said, well, a one point, I think it was a 1.9 is nothing for California. They, they, they're used to much bigger, at least threes and fours. And she said, well, she said, when it's happening right near your building, which is on the coast and things are happening more on the coast, then she said, then it's a whole different experience. Then it may be a 1.9 or a two, but it's, it's scary. It's, it's a wake up call. It's a wake up message. So that said, I hope, but I doubt because I'm being very honest that they find some people who are still alive, buried under the rubble of Surfside in Miami, but I don't think so. Uh, it's still search and rescue, but I think it's going to soon go to search and recovery and I'm sorry to hear about this latest incident of collapse. Uh, also in the heat, if you're out in the heat, your whole body might get dehydrated and you can be someone who collapses. Someone who never gets affected by heat, but all of a sudden you're walking down the street and you're like, I don't feel good. My blood pressure is sinking and you collapse. Take care of yourself, take care of your loved ones, and I will be back maybe with something a little more exciting. Um, thank you very much for listening.